Okay, this lesson is going to be on the beginner blues. A complete, a lesson on if you're a complete beginner or, uh, and I'm going to show some things for advanced beginner. And the blues is different things to different people. To some people, the blues is Stevie Ray Vaughan. Okay, I love Stevie Ray Vaughan, but it's no place for a beginner to start. All right, it's easier to start back with the older guys, and I know a lot of people have showed how to play the shuffle and yada yada, um, that's fine, and then immediately people jump from learning basic little shuffle things to practicing the pentatonic scale over and over and over, and that gets them nowhere and they're further confused, okay? So I'm assuming that you already know how to make chords, so we're going to start in the key of E. finger picks and a thumb pick, but for this lesson, most people start out with a flat pick. So here's your E major chord. Lift your ring finger, now you have an E7 chord. Put that back down, put your pinky down at the 3rd fret, 2nd string, now you have an E7 chord. You also have an E7 chord here. Okay, and it looks like a D7 but moved up, or an E, a backwards D. Okay, so you're starting on the fourth fret, ring finger, first string, third, third fret, first finger, second string. Middle finger, fourth, uh, third string, fourth, your middle finger, fourth fret. And then you can go back into your E from that. So you can do the whole chord. I like the C7 because you can move it up. You can use it as a turnaround. Okay. But we'll get we'll come back to that. So for now we're here. You can just for your turnaround. shape up to here there's another E7. Okay. So you were here, you've went one, two, and then move these fingers a whole step rather than a half step. So you went one, you went, moved it up one, two, and then move those fingers. So now you are on the fifth fret your ring finger, first string, uh, or no, seventh fret, fifth, fifth fret, second string, first finger, third string, at the seventh fret. So you can go. Then you go into your A7. But, for the purposes of this lesson, 
less and we're going to keep learning more. E's up the neck, okay? You can also do that E like this, which is just taking the whole thing and turning it backwards. Okay? So now you're barring at the seventh fret across all three strings, and then you're putting your your ring finger in the middle on the uh, second string, ninth. Here's another set, uh, E7 at the ninth fret. You're barring these four. That's an E6. Okay. E7. So E6 at the ninth fret. Then put that finger down. E7, which can now take you all the way back up to your E major. would be you're starting at the uh, ninth or seventh fret. I don't have my glasses on. I think it looks double vision. Okay. Your ring finger on your ninth fret, fifth string, middle finger, or sorry, seventh, six, five, second fret. There's an A7. You can use this A note as well. This is also an A7, just these two notes. And you could use this note. There's another A7. So it would be as if you were here and you just moved it down. Okay, there's A7. these notes to play with. Back to E. B. E. R. A. E7. 
next we're going to learn our A chords. Okay, so now we're going to learn all our A7 chords. So we started out with this one. Next we went to this one. I rarely will use this. I usually use this. Here's our A, our A7 right here, the 5th fret, 6, 7, so basically we're doing the same thing we were doing in E7, only now we're barred, and we're using other fingers to make the same shape. Okay. Here's our other A7, which is the same as like what we did our E7 down here, now it's up here. That is an A chord, partial A chord right there. We want to make a seventh, like I showed you. Okay. Okay, so we can harmonize and go through all those chords right up to this A7. We can move this A7 up to here. So we did the same thing with E when we moved it to here. Now we're doing the same with our A7 here, and we're moving it to here. Okay? If you were to reverse that, there's another A7. There's an A minor. Starting at the uh, 13th fret. But for the purposes of this, we're going to stick to the 7th, reverse it, there's another A7. Okay? <clears throat> so we've done our A7 here, we've done our A7 here, we've done it here, we've done it here, and we've done it here, and we've done it here. I use this one a lot, which is just rather than barring the whole thing and using these, these notes, right here. Because it gives you a good starting off point to go into your major, which we won't worry about that for right now. Okay, so that's what we're worried about. And this chord is just with the middle string open rather than. Rather than a regular A, we're lifting that one. Okay, there's another A7. Our other A7. Okay. This is an A7, which is the same as this, but it's more of a partial. I'll use that a lot. This is our A7. A7. Starting at the 10th fret, so you're moving the whole thing, like we did with our E, like this. Okay? So those are the A7 chords that we need to know. And we're going to just briefly go back to E. This is our E shuffle. What I'm doing is I'm fast tracking. I'm flying through this because I think you can grab it. I don't think it's that complicated or complex. And because it's a video, you can watch it again and again. Okay? And nothing needs to be tabbed out for this stuff. Okay? So here's our E and there's our A. So our A E shuffle, you may already know it. Doing it up 
left stroke there, an accent. Remember this is part of the E, so I'm grabbing that and doing an accent to it, just to spice your shot off. You can use your uh, A to G, back to E. I transitioned from the when I was doing the shadow here. And then I went to my A. Okay, the B7 chord. Now this is a chord that really gets beginners, okay? Because a lot of people will use this chord, which is your pinky here on the first string, second fret, then you skip a string, your ring finger here, okay? On your third string, second fret, then on your fifth string, second fret, you're here, and on your first string, third, our fourth string, first fret, you're here. That's a difficult chord for beginners, and especially to put into a shuffle to start with. Sometimes what I'll do is I'll show people if I'm playing, teaching them how to play a shuffle, and right and on, I'm just hitting these two little bass notes on the top. it forward and those notes are just four three four open and as you get faster at it you can bury them on a i'm not doing that i'm going from the six or all the way up to the seven because that's a six that's a six a seven than going to this B chord. Keep it simpler. We'll get to that turnaround in a second. So the B chord that I was using, I learned from Jimmy Reed. It sounds wrong. It is musically wrong, but it works in the blues. So here for A, I was going. For B, I was going at the fourth fret. I was just moving the whole thing up. For the turnaround, I was hitting fourth E string. string, first fret, string, first uh, fret, one finger, first finger, to the B note, so I was going. Then forming the, that B7. I'm doing the whole B7 though, but if you can't for right now, just go. And just make that shape. So if you start at the B, a, B, then you're back to the beginning.
is using parts of the pentatonic scale and the major pentatonic scale. What I was doing was using parts of the chord. Learning the scales by themselves doesn't do anything but confuse you. Okay? So, I went to this B here, B7, because you know this is an A7, if you borrow your strings. Here's a B7. You can use this B7 as well, rather than this B7 or... So you can go. doing here when I was on the A was I was outlining the A chord. Rather than playing it, I was going, I was going, let me see if I remember what I was doing now. Because what I'm doing with the scale is I'm outlining the chords. slow down. So sometimes I get I get confused when I slow it right down. Because I'm just used to playing, not thinking about it anymore. A7, E7, E7. doing that that I've already showed you okay you know all those I've just taught all those chord shapes for the B I went from here slid down to it for the A I used this A7 if you always keep your chords moving that's the thing with the blues the chords are always moving right So now let's talk about the pentatonic. Because the pentatonic scale, without knowing your chords and your blues chords and or some blues chords and some blues chord inversions, is completely useless. Okay. Because the scale, the pentatonic scale and the major pentatonic scale and the blues scale are all part of the chords. When I was young and I used to listen to the old guys, I could never figure out why they didn't sound like they were playing a scale. Yet they could do a little soul.
they could sound like they were doing a, a solo, but they, they didn't sound like they were playing a scale. It sounded far more musical than anything I was doing. I mean, I was learning the, the E pentatonic scale, and I was going... <laughs> itself is completely useless. And then there's the blue scale. started to learn was parts of using parts of the pentatonic scale while I was playing. So this is part of the pen the E pentatonic. We know this. This note. I can do Unision slides. string open. you can play your regular seven chords. You can substitute them for the shuffle. didn't get into yet was your B7 chords all the way up the neck. Okay? So that's what we'll, we'll be doing next. 
Okay, so our B7 chords all the way up to neck. We already learned this one, okay, which is difficult for a lot of people. We learned this one. Okay. We also have um, this one. So this is your B7 chord here, starting at the seventh fret, like you would do your A and your E7. So we've moved up. We're at the seventh fret. Okay, and we have it here. Just like we had our A1 here, and we have our E1 here, E7, okay? It's the same thing. So you don't have to do a whole chord. You can just hit that note for your turnaround too, if it's too difficult at first. showed you this for the B, this for the A, turn around, for the B you can also do this. So I'm barring the entire chord. So the same way that I'm doing this, I'm doing it for the B. slides in the key of E with the pentatonic scale. I like to stick there. Okay. Now for your E pentatonic, another thing I like to state when you're a beginner, just stay on the top two strings. to bend and learn vibrato. If you're a very simple player and uh, you have a really good vibrato, you will sound better than somebody who is a complex player but their vibrato is not quite up to it. Because I hear a lot of people play like that where their vibrato is kind of like it sounds like a mosquito, you know, or it's really rapid. It's, it's not vocal. You want a vocal vibrato. So remember, we can bend up to those. So I, I stole this from Albert King, actually. But so I'm bending into the flat of it. Then I'm bending into this note. So I'm going. This is an E note. Mm -hmm. 
This is an E9. I didn't show you that. I used those too. So when I'm playing, I will oftentimes, if I'm playing a blues in the key of E, I will do chords of go into A, if I'm soloing, I'm not, I may not go to an A chord, I might do this little lick here. Back to E. Then for B I might. Here at your seventh and ninth fret, if you were to put your fingers like this, that is, that's an E major chord. If you bend it, I'll also do this like sometimes. Slide into the E. as a bass, uh, just to keep your bass going at the same time. It's a practice. 
ました。to show you when I and I said I would get back to it. The reason I like this thing seven you can use it as a good turnaround. Okay. If you can't get or you can do it use as your flat pick you can't get this finger in there yet. You can also go into your A pentatonic. I'll just do it. That's when your pentatonic scale comes in handy, okay? I'm going to go next to the key of A, and we're going to learn our A chords up the neck, which we've already done, but then we're going to go into our, our D chord, um, D7 chord, and uh, our E chord. So we have already know our E and our A up the neck. We're going to go into our D7, but we're, we're going to be in the key of A, and we're going to get more into the pentatonic in mixing the, mi <clears throat> the major and the minor pentatonic. Okay, now we're in the key of A. We're not playing an E anymore. We know our A7 chord. We know our A7 chord here. So I'm mixing the chord in the scale. because we know our E's all the way up. 
We know our A's all the way up, A7s. Now we're going to learn our D's. Okay. Your D7 is here. Okay. At the first fret. Second fret is your ring and middle finger. On this string and this string. sound bigger, you can put your thumb you can move any of these notes around while you're playing back to A E or your 1 is E, your 4 is A, and your B is 5. In the key of A, your 1 is A, your 4 is uh, E7, and your 5 is E7. So rather than doing them like this, this time I went from my A7 and I did them like this. Because remember when we did our A7 down here like this? Just two? Well, we can do that here when we're barred. E7, D7, A7. Okay? So we know our A7. Okay? We know our D7. You've got all these notes here to play with. That's what we want to know. And like I say, I play with finger picks and a thumb pick, so a flat pick is not natural to me. But I'm showing you with a flat pick, and I'm limited because most people who are beginners play with a flat pick. <coughs> Pardon me. So, D7, you can also move it around. D7. D7, 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 back to A7. Okay, so we could do a shuffle.
also a, uh, that's an E. I ripped this off from, uh, this is a, uh, a rip off from Gary, Reverend Gary Davis. <coughs> So that keeps me in the A major pentatonic. Because this is your A chord, if you were to stay in these notes, that would be your A major pentatonic. As soon as you add these, this is your A, your A uh, pentatonic. This is your A blues. Okay, and I use the A major. But I'll use it down here. This is an E. You can use it as an E7. D7. A7. E7. And that was just all my fingers. Just like this. Okay, these are just partial chords you can use in your little chord solos. So back to the A scale. So what I'm doing here is I'm using the A pentatonic, the A blues, with the A major. And I'm taking the A major and I'm bending it up to that pentatonic note. That's when the A, when the pentatonic scale starts to, to make sense to me, right? When I can start blending all those together and realize that the scale was actually building chords, okay? So that's how the old Robert Johnson did. You can use both those bass.
take place in every key. In the key of E they take place. You can use all those major notes, blah, blah, blah. A is just the easiest place to teach it. Um, in B, you can use them all. Okay? So that is the beginning of the blues. Learn, learn your shuffle. And learn to vibrato. Use the whole guitar and your whole arm if you have to. These more BB King ones are a little bit. You have to really get your whole hand. See, I play slide guitar, so I learned to vibrato with a slide, then went to my. slide and I learned my vibrato with a slide so it wasn't that tough for me to get up with just my finger so bend bend into note see how I'm bending into my flat of fifth because that's how I play. I don't play with a flat pick. But for the purposes of this lesson, I used it. Okay? I find that a lot easier for me. Because I can really dig in. turnaround that I used there I'm making an A chord then I'm putting my fingers down on these strings here uh, third fret second string fourth string fourth fret Okay, so your A, like six. Or you can go. Okay? Or you can go. You know all these chords. Huh? That's how 
I do it. Over here. And you can do the same accent that you were doing in the key of E. This is your D, so here we're going with our A shuffle, and like in E, we can move from our E down to our A shuffle, you can move from your A1 down to your D1, which, are, which is right here. in between everything because the interesting thing about blues guitar as opposed to some other styles is that <coughs> like slide guitar and open tuning um, the line between rhythm and lead is blurred in blues guitar very rarely will you find anybody who is just a rhythm blues guitar player right I mean they play everything the old guys played licks in between things um, 
you listen to somebody like Stevie Ray Vaughan, he was a master uh, rhythm guitar player, a master lead guitar player. He was constantly throwing fills. He was constantly substituting licks for chords and, you know, doing little chord solos and all kinds of fancy stuff. But this is where you start. You learn your, your chords up the neck. In the key of E, we learn them E, E7, up the neck. We learned some A7s up the neck, some B7s up the neck. <clears throat> In the key of A, we learned, uh, we already knew E and A's up the neck. We learned some B, or uh, D7s up the neck. So that should get you started anyway. And um, thanks for watching. Here's a little bonus for you that I know, that I learned a long time ago. We're going to be in the, the A blues scale, okay? Okay? This part here, you can play here. Okay? It's the same as this. So that gives you licks down here. is again. Okay, here it is again. Here it is again. Okay, so I'll go through it again. Here it is again. Here it is again. through it again. This is the one I like the best. Because it goes into my A chord. Okay? So there's your, your chord with the pentatonic scale in it. Or the, the, the blues scale in it. This one I don't use a lot, so I, 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 I mess it up. Okay. So just remember that. 